need to understand that this is one of the most powerful things that Jesus left with us. The Bible says, I mean, men to men to the barrel was Let all the children come. We have labored a lot. We began by looking at the three spheres of dominion that man was given a mandate to have dominion in the heavens and we will come to the heavens have dominion on the earth over every creeping thing and also have dominion over the marine or the fish which actually this is the air kingdom the land kingdom and the marine kingdom naturally a good military base has air force land soldiers and marine so it kind of brings a formation in the natural of what it ought to be even in the spiritual and we laid ground on some of these things we took time to lay ground and we say dominion is kingship legislation or rulership so the lord expects us to have dominion in all these areas and this conversation began when we were trying to look at the place of riches a blessing riches and wealth and we discovered that wealth is spiritual and until a man masters the three realms then that man is limited in some operation so we say that 70% of the earth is water. And that tells you this is an ancient and very expansive kingdom. We also realize that 70% of man is water. That means man becomes a good conduit of carrying this particular spirit. And when we look at these realities, you begin to understand from a language of commerce, the sea is the greatest pathway of wealth. So he that controls the waters controls economies. Because that is the pathway. I was meditating and the Lord told me there are three types of men. There are people doing business. There are people doing commerce. And there are people doing trade. Those are the three categories of men. They are those who are doing business. Those are transactions, goods, and services. They are those who are doing trade. They are those who are doing commerce. Commerce level, maybe you have entered into manufacturing. But they are those who are doing trade. That means you are in the realm of nations. And the pathways of the waters dictates what arrives on land. Prices are not made in the manufacturing center. Let me even be very clear. Prices are not determined by producers in China. Prices are made in the sea. One day our president rose and said, Mambo ni matatu. Because someone had withheld sugar in the water, waiting for there to be a crisis on land so that he can dictate the price. He that controls the waters controls the economy. And there are very few believers in trade. Majority are in business. And even the business they are doing is not structured. It's try and error. No systems. The next level after faith is management. Management is a skill. Faith is an impartation. Are we together i can tell you if we sit with you and analyze your business 70 percent of the people are not going through warfare they are going through strategy gaps today i'll speak to you as a father and also as a pastor there are demons to fight but there are structures to set there are systems that provoke growth one of the, I, I read a book that says, you don't grow to manage, but you manage to grow. 
The success of every enterprise is connected to the details of management. You don't grow to manage, but you manage to grow. That's why scripture is clear. Never despise the days of your humble beginning. Because if you are faithful and you learn the art, it's automatic, your future is greater. The only work that begins from the top is digging a grave and it brings you down. Anyone that is at the top, they had a place they began in with life. When you see a man at the top, interact with his foundations. Many celebrate this, the medals, but very few want to interact with the scars. Many celebrate the medals. Very few want to interact with the scars. Behind every star, there is a scar. In life, I'm just sharing wisdom. I'll come to my message. In life, the door of exit is the widest. Quitting is the easiest. You don't need energy to quit. You need decision. But you need energy to build. Hallelujah. So, quitting is the easiest. I was listening to a military man give a speech and he said and he was giving a speech in American context he said in the military barracks there is a bell that is the bell that you see daily when you are exercising when you wake up you see that bell and that bell is put there so that anyone who wants to quit can go and ring it it is the least guarded bell because and when you ring the bell the whole assembly gathers to see who is quitting and they are very quick to encourage you to quit because they know war is not for volunteers it's for prepared men and I feel like in life the bell of quitting is very visible someone must outgrow that visibility and say I will fight until I become who the Lord said I will be a man was told he's going to die of cancer and he was given three years to live and he wrote in his book and said the paradox of life is that when men know they have no time to live that is the time they want to live but when men know they have time to live they live as if they want to die and he wrote a book called Living Full and Dying Empty. 23 years later, he's still alive, born again. And I looked at that statement and I said, this is a very powerful statement. Can you look at your life and say, indeed, I want to go to the grave empty. That I have exercised. I have tried everything I knew that is in me. I have ex explored it. And I can say, indeed, I'm going to the grave empty. I said, I think... If they will ever write anything on my graveyard, I'll, write, I'll prefer they write it, I lived full and I died empty. That even if I was to live another one year, there is nothing I would have done. That's why Paul reaches a place and says, I have run the race. I have kept the faith and now. That is a man that has lived full and is dying empty. A rich man dies and he writes and says, vanities of vanities. Matthew 16 and verse 18. I want to talk about the doors, the gates of entry of this marine power. If you can read, let's read. And also I said to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Just stay there. This is a narrative of Jesus with his disciples. And they came to a place called the Philippi of Caesarea. I don't know if that's how they, you know, sometimes when you read 
these Asian names, you pronounce them funny, but I believe it's something like that. And so when they came to that area, history says there were many rocks that bore names of different gods. So when they arrived in that area, where there were many rocks that were inscribed with the names of different gods, he stopped the crowd and asked them, who do men say that I am? And they said, you know, some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are the prophet of old. Then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter looked unto him and said, you are the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. And then he looked at Peter and said, that level of intelligence is beyond academic radar. Flesh and blood has not revealed. And then he said, upon this rock, that rock was Jesus. I will build my church, Ecclesia. And the gates, the entries of Hades shall not prevail. Now, and then he said, from today, O Peter, you shall be, from today, O Simeon, you shall be Peter. Caiaphas, Petros. Now, when he spoke to Peter, he had to tell Peter, a man powerful is the intensity of the word of God because the word of God is powerful. When an ordinary man carries a powerful word, that man is powerful. That is the secret of power. You know, if today you are sent by the president to go and meet the governor of Kiambu, because of the message you carry, you are so powerful. The way you will be received by the protocol of the governor, they, will, they are not receiving you. They are receiving the content of what you carry because of the source. Hallelujah. That's why when the Bible says God is not a respecter of men, is that anyone who pursues this pathway of seeking for revelation, elevation is automatic. So he said, I will shift you from Simeon. You shall be Petro, Petras. I'm, I'm, I'm in Petros, like a small rock. And, 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 and you now becoming a rock. I am the big rock. You can't build a church on Peter. You can only build a church on Jesus. And he said, upon this rock, Jesus is the rock. In the wilderness, they drank from Jesus. He's the one that provided water. And that is why Moses was judged. Because he was told, speak to the rock. What Moses does not know, it was not a monument, it was a being. But instead of speaking to the rock, he decided to strike the rock. And the Lord said, because you never spoke, you will die. And Paul writes and says, they all drank from the rock. That rock is Jesus. And Jesus said, upon this rock, Jesus, I will build my, my, my church. The church does not belong to Pastor T. It belongs to Jesus. It has an owner. In fact, I am privileged to be selected as a shepherd to shepherd his flock. It is a privilege. And my greatest report that I want to give to glory is that master, none have I lost. Are we together? So he says upon this rock, I will build my church. That word there is ecclesia. Somebody say ecclesia. Somebody shout ecclesia. Because the problem when we hear the name church, and I know I'm on the pulpit, but it's key for us to understand history. The advantage of history, which is history, is not biased. When the King James, the King of England, when he heard about Christianity and the faith, he got interested to understand that book. And he told the people, he gathered a team of authors and interpreters. And he encouraged them to interpret the Bible from Greek and Hebrew to a language he could read. That's why the Bible you bear is called the King James Version. 
Okay? And it is a strange thing because the man had very strange behaviors morally. So they wrote him the King James Version and it was in the king's language. And when they were trying to constitute the church of England, they told them, where you see the name Ecclesia, don't interpret it in the original Ecclesia. Write the name church. So that when the people read that word, they will identify with the church of England. And even all of us, when we read the name church, we think denomination. We think life church. We think all these things. But Jesus was not bringing a denomination. Silence is for understanding, not floating. So that name Ecclesia, I know deliverance is happening. Me mean you are life church. No, where when you are Yesu? But because of all the mungwa menis idea, nikwe chini ya mchungaji. See, mchungaji, mchungaji. So that he can feed me, but I belong to Jesus first, but on earth he will bring me to a man. But that man is not my God. So that name Ecclesia in classical Greek, it was a selection of few men who made laws and controlled the affairs of a city. It is like the modern day parliament where 300 people dictate the affairs of a nation. It is later in philosophical history that a man who was writing a book on communism who propagated for atheism by the name of Karl Marx wrote and said the church is the opium for the poor and when I look at Kenya and Africa it looks like the church is where people go for therapy and once their lives are sorted they go back to the world But Karl Marx was not right, he's very wrong. The church of Jesus is a territorial force. Hallelujah. Pastor, are you trying to say the poor are not permitted? Listen, you can come as you are, but you can never go back as you are. Something must give way. There must be transactions. Because when you begin to have dominion, is automatic. Victory and success is automatic. So the church is not an opium for the poor. Are you getting me? The church is not where men gather to listen to one powerful man. The church is an assembly of powerful men. Kaya. Men that can make legislation concerning a territory. Men that can make verdicts concerning a territory. You know something was trending and I saw one bishop speaking. And I said, out of her rank, she can interfere with a few things. Don't ignore men that can do business with God. <laughs> there is a bishop friend of mine who is in Kisumu. One day, they wanted to demolish his church. And the county approved everything. Because where the, the church is, is a very prime area that government was interested. All politicians were for the idea and someone was interested specifically with that land. And the papers were passed and they brought and, 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 and the car was ready. In the morning, I'm talking of Kisumu, in the morning that machine, Elikataku Guruma, another government was put in place and because he never stole the land it was out of greed he had legal ground to contend with them that were contending with him and the man who authorized for the demolition of the church died that week there is a level you are not contending with a man Hi. You are contending with another government that that man represents. And so any time, now there was rumor in the office that the one who authorized died. So any time a man is sent to demolish the church, you all is like to moja. Kwako umepanga vizuri. 
kwa sababu sio mimi mnapigana na yeye hii vita iko na nani mwenyewe i just stand as a territorial power and so jesus comes and says upon this rock i will build my ecclesia and the gates that's where i want to go and the gates of hades shall not prevail against it what are gates a gate is an entry a gate is an entry a gate is an entry so when a church operates in a territory where there are active demonic gates and that church does not have power to close the gates that church will be overpowered uh ronnie tamani come and prof so there are gates and they are not one or two there are many gates there are many gate entries demonically so now the money stand this is a gate this is a gate and this one because you're in black these are spirit and this one now the gate is closed now as long as the gate is closed there is no demonic interference there is no oppression there is no interference in your life and then now out of legality a spirit cannot enter earth without an invitation of a being that is legal on earth and that's man so spirits are illegal without invitations are we together so they can't enter because they were not designed to be on earth so they are locked in gates and so what the enemy needs to do is to come and partner with a man and give him intelligence of how to open this gate so that the forces of darkness can have ground on earth i i keep on asking myself who taught our grandfathers that when you raise an altar release a sacrifice make enchantments something will shift someone that has never gone to ordinary school has the power to tie the life of a graduate this is beyond intellectual level someone knows that if i mix this herb and this herb i'm able to do something a grandmother has lived with stones and only her understands that when i shake the stones and they fall in a certain pattern this is what it means who taught them that intelligence who taught them how to invoke the realms of the spirit and begin to receive backup from that realm who taught them someone must receive the intelligence so that now they are able to open the doors and the spirit has legal entry now so if this man understands the system of the altar the system of sacrifice the system of sound this man now becomes a practitioner and he raises an altar you might call it traditional altar you might call it whatever you want to call it but now we are dealing with spirituality the man exalts an altar and guess what he does he now opens a door and a spirit is now legally in the domains of the earth ha. Pastor Kevin, come. Are, are you understanding up to there? So now, this spirit is legal on earth. Now remember, this man can die. But spirits don't die. So the man invoked a dimension, activated a dimension of spirits. And then now, Pastor Kevin, maybe Pastor Kevin is the son of Pastor William. And he shows up on earth. He doesn't understand what his family is dealing with. He just thinks in this family, people just get pregnant when they're in form three. In this family, people die when they are almost approaching the age of success. 
He just thinks in this family, we have never seen anyone rise beyond poverty. And he comes and thinks it's just ordinary. No, things don't just happen. There is a level you must begin to interrogate and ask yourself, no. How comes I'm seeing the same pattern that was there, still pursuing my life? And so the man comes. If this man is not sensitive, this spirit has legal ground. This spirit will oppress him. This spirit will terrorize his life and wait for another generation. Demons don't die. What the Lord does is that he raises a man with a revelation. That upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. So what might happen is that Kevin, at the time he's in Form 2, he might receive Jesus. He's not just getting born again. The Lord is looking for a legal man on earth that can become a partner with heaven to begin to shut any door that was open in the realm of the spirit. Listen, some of us, we pray the way we pray because there is no intercessor in our family. We are the only ones that can pray. When I look at my brother, when I look at my sister, when I look at everyone in my family, no one has ever prayed so I have me to fight for me some of you we bless the Lord for you your grandfather was a church elder your mom is an ancient intercessor you even if you sleep things will work for you I tell you some of us if we sleep today all the devils in our family are pursuing our lives that's why we cannot be quiet someone asked me pastor lazima ushout ni kasema ndio kwa sababu mimi vitu napigana nazo zingine lazima zinisikia zikiwa pali ziko wewe uko sawa mimi zina mtu wakuniombea mimi ni amuke ni jiombe wewe utakuja kanisa 11 mimi siezi miss masaya maombi why I have no one else to pray for me if I don't win my family is in trouble the seriousness of a man's faith is dictated by what they are dealing with oh look at that man tell him where were you look blessed your father alitoa kiwanja ya kanisa wewe uko sawa hi muambia kwetu ni mimi ni meokoka Kwetu hawa ombangi. Mimi ndo nimeshikilia milango na najua ni nini napigana nayo. Is someone getting my? Is someone getting me? That's why when you see some people shouting leave them. Wewe uliombewa sisi tumebeba the whole family. Tunafunga milango za kale na tunataka za sasa zifunguke. So we cannot be casual the way you are casual. We cannot sleep with the way you are sleeping because unless something happens, I cannot die where my father dies. Unless something happen, I have seen this pattern. It cannot take another when Jesus is in me. I never got born again just to go to heaven. The ecclesia, the church of Jesus, the territorial commander must begin to arise we didn't just get born again to speak in tongues there must be results in our life there must be evidence of power so pastor kevin has no one to fight for him the man gets born again to be preserved that's why we must invade those high schools i'm excited today we have more than 10 high schools receiving the gospel we are looking at more than 50,000 students who will hear the gospel today. There is a team in Kakamega. There, is, there are other teams. We are in more than five counties. Because we can't just sit here when a generation is dying. Every family, the deliverance of your family is not in an archbishop. No, no, no. There must be a legal man in that family. You, you know, if I come in your family gathering today and I begin to give opinions, people will not talk. They will wait for me to leave. Once I leave, they will say, we only mugeni a dream yetu. So even in the realms of the spirit, you cannot wait for me to come and say, mimi ndonavunja madabahu ya kwenyo. God will have to raise a Gideon. A Gideon, a man in that home. A man in that home. A man in that home. A Gideon must arise. And the hand of the Lord will behave upon Gideon. Because when I studied the life of Gideon, even the father could not destroy the altars in his own house. The day Gideon destroyed those altars, the father said, if Baal is God, let him fight for himself. Meaning that the father could not fight the idols. The father was also waiting for a man to arise. Some of you, you are the man. My good oh God you are the man there are things even your father never dealt with them the Lord is saying in your age you have time you can deal with these ancient patterns in your age you have time Kaposhataya, to begin to destroy altars the things you know your father did not know 
So the results you have are not the same. And so the Lord now has to save Pastor Kevin and make sure he knows the truth. The truth is, there, yes, there is what Walifungwa Milango. But now he needs to know the truth according to scripture. Because if he doesn't know it according to scripture, at Ibiwa, the fact that he has a reality in his life, he becomes a victim of manipulation. He might meet a strange man who will tell him, Sasa kwenye kuli inuliwa madabahu, wakatoa ngombe saba, tafuta nane. Huyo ni mwizi. Kama ngombe ineza komboa watu wa masai wa kosawa. Bwana asifiwe. Eh, hey, mwingine hata kuambia nataka kwenda maombi siku saba kwa mlima hata sitaki unilipe niwekee gari mafuta naombanga na wazee wangu wa kanisa wa saba moja tu mwachie 1500 hiyo ni 35000 huyo pia ni suspect huyo ni mchinjaji Mungu ataongoza pasta Kevin na muongoze kwa njia zinazofaa ili aelewe maandiko yeye mwenyewe ajue maandiko because a deliverer must come from that house and today I sense I'm speaking to men that's why the Bible says Gideon, Gideon, mighty man of valor, Gideon, Gideon, mighty man of valor. What is valor? The ability to engage in battle. I reached a place, I said, Lord, tell me who I am. Because life can give me another identity. Reveal who I am according to you. Because I could be walking with a barren wife, Sarah, but in heaven you are calling me the father of many nations. So according to my social status, I have a barren wife. But according to heaven you are saying that's a man who will bring a generation lord tell me who i am may the lord reveal to you who you are because society can give you another branding situations can give you another branding life can give you another branding but the day jehovah begins to call you by your identity it will even surprise your life gideon mighty man of valor arise kayo shataya i declare today arise sate arise because a generation is waiting for your rising and so pastor Kevin must be serious with his work this one cannot mess up when people are praying for 30 minutes he does not have that luxury when people are busy chasing money he knows money may never locate me until I sought the realm because there are functions that oppose me from ancient days and so what the Lord will do he will now raise him. And when he gets the revelation of Jesus, he can even do that operation in his bedroom. I love prayer mountains. They are good. But when you know you serve an omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God, your mountain can be in your bedroom. That every time you go down on your knees, you can generate an atmosphere where angels can ascend and descend. Let us not idolize some places. Remember you have Jesus in you. Pastor, is it bad to go? I love mountains. I love. Because sometimes in the house you can't pray. Because TV is there. Children are there. So you must separate. But it doesn't mean there is more God there than where you are. Because I've had people tell me, Pastor, I'm going mlima. Mungu wa songi. Shida si na mlima. Shida ni ufunuo. Apo kwa nyumba na ezasonga. Na ujazwe na roho na ukue slain kwa sitting room. Just need to create an environment that the Holy Ghost can move. So this man begins to understand, no, my father, or there are legal spirits even when I'm doing business. Some of these things are not just opened by families. You go to a street and men invoke their powers. Every day they are opening, you also need to shut. Hey, this man, they are about to announce a season of opening. And they will open. <laughs> and then he tells Peter, listen, I've given you the keys. Because there are gates, you need keys. He never said, I will give you the key. Because, and the gates of hate shall not prevail. So if there are gates, there must be keys. So that you can close every gate that has ever been opened. How are the keys given by revelation of Jesus? And so it is possible for this man to arise in prayer. 
and declare in the name of Jesus anything in my family that is not of God I command you to go back to Hades and I tell you that reality will happen the gates will open again to receive its member and the gates will shut and until another man rises now it means he has territorial power whatever he does must prosper whatever he does must succeed why he has already shut the gates of hell this is what we call victory when you know men that do spiritual mapping and warfare if you sit down bishop mother thomas mother kiambu has re he did masters in spiritual warfare that man has traversed all over kenya planting scriptures Today you cannot afford land in Kiambu. I know those days. The name Kiambu means Kiambu. Anytime mutu alikuwa na sikia mepeleko Kiambu, unajua mtatua maiti. This was the place where they used to dump the dead. Nobody wanted to buy property in Kiambu. Today, you can't get property. You can't get property. Vika, Vika. That name means Woveka. Kuzika. For so long, churches never survived. Because any man that wants to arise, the spirit arrests you. Woveka. Yeah. Yes. That's why now, oh my God. That's why names are not just names. Men will step in territories. That's Yokimau. Yokimau was the name of an ancient witch who used to rule that area. Juja, Juja is the name of Indian gods. Juja. Planted in the gardens of Juja. Do me to a kipindi watu angu. What one is a to the rao? Lakini to me to a kipindi. Kufunga milango. What one a kujonga na zema o? Unajua kiambu ili funguka is because of the direction from the city, the economic progress. My friend, that, that's the level you understand from. But when you know the dealings that have happened in that town, you will know that you know it was not automatic. There are men who die and territories open up. <laughs> I, 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 I read a story because I was asking, one, one preacher called me. I can be a pastor ni meona hema. Ni kambia hapo ndio niko. Akaniambia wewe na John the Baptist same was up group. Ni kamuliza kwa nini? Akaniambia, akaniambia hapo ni jangwa. Watu wanakuja, nikamwambia hata sikuwa nimeona hivyo lakini ni vizuri. Ndio tujue ule Mungu tuna serve. And, and a man of God, Bishop Lai, he prayed in Mombasa one year until the powers of Mombasa told him to mekuachia muji. He used to pray by the sea. After there was an attack on his church, principalities ikasema tumekuachia muji. To appoint the sheikhs, used to call him sheikh. That I'm not talking of Nigeria. Najwa mnapenda Nigeria. We are talking of men in this land. And, 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 and I met one of the sons and he told me, when they made that prayer, when they made that prayer, on Sunday, people used to run to church. Kaya. Because the forces that were holding the city are now back to their places. And the lives of men can now be released. Sunday, people were not walking, running to church, doing five services in a city. Mega. In a town that is next to the sea. What does that tell you? We will overcome. Our fathers have laid the foundation. I'm happy because I'm looking at local fathers that have laid the foundation. That is to tell me this generation too. We must begin to close doors that were opened by ancient men. We must begin to close doors. We are not on this mountain in Limuru just to come and build another church and then put a big banner. We are here to close demonic gates. We are here to shut doors by the revelation of Jesus upon this church. And I love that language, my church, my church. Because if this be the church of Jesus, it can never lose any battle. It can never lose any battle. The Bible says Paul was persecuting the church. Jesus showed up and asked him, why thou persecuted I? Because when you touch the church, you have touched him. That battle is too high. I declare let warriors arise out of this meeting. I don't know which door is open in your family or even in your life, but I declare by the revelation of Jesus, 
Jesus. I send you with the authority of the living God. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. I release you as a watchman to begin to guard any door that has been opened in your father's house and your family. May you begin to close every door that has been opened even where you do business. You can have your seats. Now let, let, let's talk of gates of entry. Are you learning something? Gates of entry. Please write this very quickly. For those who love points, I have them today. Gates of entry of the marine power. Number one, idolatry. 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 That is worshipping of other gods. Idols are designed with territorial power. Idols are designed with territorial powers. Idols are designed with territorial power. That's why the Bible says, do not design any image of what is on the air, the land, and even water beneath. Number two, initiation. Gates are opened through initiation. Through events and rituals. People are initiated through events. People are initiated through rituals. Anything that bears water, before you do any activity, please consult. I have had many things, people being told, go and pour this water around your house. Put salt in this water and do one, two, three. Those are very high level initiations. The realm of the demonic is legal. You just need to apply the formula and things will begin to be activated. Initiations. You hear people tell you you need to bathe under the full moon. Many things. Number three, consultation of marine priests. Consultation of marine priests. Some of them appear as diviners. Consultation of marine priests. Please, from today, just get this very basic revelation. God is not afraid of you. God is not afraid of you. If God wants to speak to you, he does not need any man's permission. I've heard people say, Naenda kwa uyu, uyu gnabi, aniambie mambo zangu. Some of those men are strange. You might attend to an altar and the next thing your life is permanently altered. And the fact that people say the truth, you must consult the spirit. Because you can tell me the truth, but the source is not the spirit of truth. When it comes to matter prophecies, the Bible says, number one, test every spirit. Not the details of the prophecy, the spirit. A man came and he met my mother. And that man told my mother, and, and, and he called my mother by the name that she's known with. He came and said, Abari Mama Jora, and this is what he began. He said, Mungu amenituma kutoka nyahururu. Na nikona habari yako. And my mother has never met this man. And he said, Nani mambo kuhusu kijana. And that time we were praying for one of our family. One of my brothers were praying for him. And that caught her attention. My mom opened the house. Akama kawaida. Some eggs disappeared. And they prayed together. But later the man came and told him, now because I'm your priest, you need to be tithing to me. That was the red light. Because my mom by scripture knows, you tithe where you feed. So the man told my mother the truth. But the source was not the spirit of truth. Because the Holy Ghost cannot contradict himself. That's why you need your sensitivity. Many diviners and prophets, they will always say something that will open your spirit for them and they begin to read your data. So they will tell you, you are William. And you say, yes, yes, yes. By the time you say yes, yes, you've opened your eyes. You are, you, are, you, are, you are covering in the spirit. And you begin to say, prophesy. Go deeper, Papa. Ha. I'm in your house. What are you doing there? So be very sensitive. Are we together? Consultation of marine priests. Watu wa huduma. 
Umesikia huduma? Tu nyumba tu huduma. Be very sensitive. Some of those women will tie their lessos and they will tell you, "Oh, you need to wash your you need to bathe with water and salt because salt represents covenant and they will open a few Old Testament uh, scriptures and many of them will never show you Jesus. They will show you rituals. Men are not delivered by rituals. We are not witches. Some people will come and tell me, Pastor, but when I did that, I got delivered. There is a realm even in the demonic called extorsism. A witch can cast out a demon out of rank. Out of rank. That's why sometimes when you're going through battles, even witches give referrals. They will tell you this one. I, I was talking to a certain lady and she said, they went to Kambani and then they were told, you chawi ni jaluoni. Because the, the kind of thing you are dealing with has a marine element. But my patterns are in land and desert. So I can't deal with that marine. So they had to look for a witch ujaluoni. Okay. Doing water rituals. Doing water rituals. Sometimes you hear, oh, when you deliver, you go and bathe in a certain river. Cultural practices that entail river circumcision. Mm -mm. You must bathe by a certain river. You know, when you touch these things, warfare explodes because culture is very personal. And then you discover anyone circumcised by that river, they all suffer immorality. They all marriages don't work. Second wives. Because they, it was not just bathing. It was something bigger. Number what? Number five. Yes. Visiting diviners and oracles. That use marine power. Some sell water. And use water for their performance. Be sensitive. Of the so called prophets. Visiting diviners and oracles that use marine power. There are meetings you go and other than praise and worship, you discover we are not in a church. We are in an altar. Operations in Afanua, you can't find them in scripture. Very strange things. Let me share this other wisdom. If it is not written, no matter who is telling you to do it, leave it. If it is not, no matter the popularity, a story is told of an old prophet who died as a diviner. And the daughter during the burial was crying because he was saying she was saying everyone thought my father was a prophet but this man died as a diviner he had his altars and rituals but he began as a genuine prophet but along the way something happened but because he was not willing to lose that relevance he now began to mix with divination and especially kenyans we don't love prayer where God speaks to men. Kenyans. We love my prophet. My prophet. Acts 16 and verse 16. Prophetic meetings are always full. One on one consultation. Okuja nifungwe files zako za maisha. Tabeba tu mbegu elfu tatu. Na kile utaguzu wachia na bi. Utamuachia. Now it happened as we went to somebody say prayer. What happened? That a certain slave girl possessed with spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by what? Fortune telling. 
So where were they going? To prayer. So what is the core interception of divination? Is your prayer. Because God speaks to men in prayer. So if a man cannot go to prayer, that man will go to a diviner. To hear what God is saying concerning their lives. So now we have people who are busy making money, looking for seeds, so that they can go to a man who has an altar to tell them their matters. Please look for God. As I said, God is not afraid of. Ew. If God gives you a dream, I don't think you need to come and ask me why you dreamt that dream. Otherwise, if God wanted me to speak to you, he would have given me that dream. And do you know a dream is what God uses because you are too busy. So he must wait for you to sleep to release a dream. Just to tell you, I've been looking for you. I want to talk, but you're too busy. Too busy meeting targets. Even 30 minutes. Anytime I want to talk, that's when you're doing emails. So I've decided to come in a dream. And then you come and ask pastor, what does this mean? I, am I the one who gave you the dream? And I'm saying this with a lot of love. Pastor, unakuanga na nema ya kuinterpret dream. My name is Tim Wangi, not Daniel. And you are not Nebuchadnezzar, for God's sake. So the one that gave you the dream, go and ask him, what were you saying? And not every dream comes from him. When the devil can give you dreams. I'm about to mention a very sensitive point. The other gate of entry is sex with carriers of the spirit. We tell people abstain. They think we are fighting their rights. Get married when you are poor. They think, pastor, what should I do? Yet I feel I want to have sex. If feelings control your life, you are dead on arrival. Mm. You just engage with one character and your sexual life goes south. You begin to have very strange appetites and desires. Sex with the carriers of the spirit. Um, a lady came and she was a dancer, a very senior dancer in Uganda. And I remember one day we hosted her here. And she said, sometimes when we go for meetings under the water, because they go and you don't go with a body. So she said, sometimes I will leave my body somewhere and a marine spirit will enter my body and take it to a club. So I'm in a meeting until four, but my body is dancing in a club. So if anyone chippos me and sleeps with my body, that person never slept with me. That person slept with a demon. Okay. You are done as a manga apostle. His only story is a Jabba Buddha. <laughs> but there are people bound sexually and they can never advance in life. They have tried everything. Something hijacked your life. And that's why mine is to bring this light so that men can begin to consult. Is that okay? The devil knows he has no time. So he cannot waste any time. And that's why you begin to see this level of perversion and casual sex. It be, you have to dig deeper when men no longer value some things. That one, that I'll come to that. Is a matter we have to discuss. Seeking fruit of the womb through marine altars. Seeking fruit of the womb through marine altars. That's how our gate is open. Seeking fruit of the womb through marine altars. Number, number eight. Living in environments where there are water bodies. Living in an environment. Right now you land in Mombasa, Kisumu. Automatically by being in that environment, you know those activities are heavy. But they can also be introduced in a territory by a water body. I can tell you for free, in Limuru, it is there. These powers are there. 
Limuru is so spiritual, yet so small. Those who are those who are from Limuru, you know, the town back in the 90s, almost a whole generation died of HIV in Limuru. Nasi Baridi. There is such a pervasive nature in this town. When you begin to decode what this city looks like, there is such a pervasive spirit. When we showed up in Limuru, my wife saw a woman in the spirit. And, and, and I was praying. The Lord told me, whatever kills ministry here is women. Don't think I surround myself with men for nothing. When you have intelligence, there are gates that don't need prayer. You just close them automatically. Yeah, it's just wisdom. I was told, man of God, this town, beware of women. I'm not saying you are bad. Please don't look yourself as a suspect. And I knew it's a force in the city. And the first visitors who came to interrogate us in the spirit were intercessors and diviners. And I remember we prayed with one of them. And that person wanted to master our prayer pattern. Because in prayer, there are people who pray with you. But there are people who pray to counter you. So the Lord gave me intelligence and told me every Tuesday from 11 to 2, go and pray alone. And that's why many times even my pastors, they don't see me pray. I always pray alone. And I'm not saying I trust you. I don't trust you. I trust you. But I learned that pattern. So every day I used to go from 11 to 2 and pray. And as I prayed, we set up a time and we said, we will be meeting at this time on Thursday from 11 to 1 to pray for the city. And these people give themselves very high names. And they said, you know, we are intercessors. And then they began to mention names of very senior pastors. In fact, I'm a spiritual daughter of so and so. In fact, last time when I was in the mountain, the Lord gave me a word for so and so. The people they are mentioning, I'm like, you mean you prophesied to so and so? And, and that now is trying to, to reduce you so that you can now submit under their authority. But now the person began to, to, to speak and, and, and the person said something that now made me to realize things are not okay. And the person said, yesterday when I was in the courts of heaven, Joseph came. Okay. Niam just give a story. What one as a manga ni meomba ni kaona Abraham. As I was in the place of prayer reading the book of Isaiah, Isaiah came. I. No shino kwani na somanga Isaiah gani mimi? Uyo ajai tokea. And so the person said, as I was in the court, Joseph came. So I wanted to know how does Joseph look. So what they have is very exaggerated things that are not in the Bible. I know there is a court of heaven. But now the conversation was intimidating and scary. That's when my eyes opened. So the day we met for prayer, the day we were meant to begin, that day, the person came late. And I, and I remember Pastor Ken was there. He said, Mom is in Muji. So we did one hour of tongues. And then after one hour of tongues, I was the one leading prayers. We did decrease using scriptures. And when that person came, in that one hour, I sensed because the person found us praying. I sensed she could not connect because there was the networks were not connecting because we had engaged another frequency. And when I began to pray, as we were making one prayer, I saw a very big reptile for close to my face. It looked like a crocodile. It was black and yellow. But it didn't have the legs. It looked like a crocodile and a snake. And it was very long. And it was here looking at me very angry. And as I was praying in tongues, I saw it reduce in size. Until it became very small. When I opened my eyes, I saw the person slain in the spirit. I knew I'm dealing with Leviathan. That's how, because Leviathan looks like a, a reptilian animal. And I have never seen that person. And the person went saying, who you are to see apostle, who you are to see pastor. I knew. So, not every prayer meeting is your meeting. Those meetings you go and you feel intimidated, walk out. 
<laughs> One day my wife went to a meeting and then people said, let us ascend. <gasps> and then they said, I am with Michael. So she came back home and said, people were ascending. I asked, where? People were with Michael, where? I said, that meeting, talk and bio. Don't be intimidated. Are we together? Born as if you were. Yeah. If it is not here, you leave it. There is a realm you can exaggerate spirituality and you begin to enter into very demonic dimensions. Somebody say environment. So this our town is like a strange one. But we are here, we are also strange men. We are also strange men. The other one is secular music from Marine Kingdom. Sung by Marine Agent. Hey! Secular music. Sung by Marine Agents. Secular music. Sung by Secular Agents. I mean sung by marine agents. Music composed from the marine kingdom. Have you realized music is so powerful in water bodies? Yeah? Whatever pali tukuna majimingi na sherehe and sound. Here at Dar es Salaam here, the kind of musicians that are there, huh? And there's one I was studying his patterns. And I discovered it's like he's being lifted as an evangelist of darkness. Because I studied that man, I realized that man, the day he married a woman older than him, it looked like now it is normal for young men to date older women. The conversation of Mumama began. Now church, I know we live in Nairobi, we're in Kenya. Then if you give me that look, I know you know. And I realized this man, none of his marriages has ever worked. But he's the most celebrated. And one day I heard him say straight on a microphone, Fulani na Fulani hanishindi kimziki hanishindi kichawi. I said, what? On TV, they are not hiding. One of his best friends, the man sees a bat in his house. And the best friend says, I am the one who has sent it. And we still think these are musicians. These men consult altars. I've done some research on music and I discovered there is a name a musician gives himself. After advancing, they begin to have an AKA. Mr. T, AKA Chief Chef. That AKA could be the name of the demon that supports my operation. And they put it right. One, one of the secular musicians from the West said, anytime I get on stage, a different spirit comes upon me. And whatever I do, I don't know. And I said, now I understand why. That you can get on stage and remove your shirt and begin to behave in a way. It means that's not you. A power has come upon you something from another kingdom and people are just thinking oh it's music it's music listen sound is a conveyor of spirits you can go to a concert thinking you went just to dance and live with a stranger and these men have serious covenants with their altars right now there's a young musician in america who is being used in a very high level to convert black community into gazing and every song he's doing is demonic. He even did a song mocking the church. Because the people that run music understand the power of music. We'll come to this when we begin to deal with the air power. You will know music is not just music. Sometimes you build earphones and what is running around your head are demons. You listen to a sound until you feel you want to get married tomorrow. You, you think it's a love song, but <laughs> it's baptizing you. Somebody says secular music. Uh, you know, there, there's a level where you don't succeed by talent. You succeed by altar. Yeah, there's a realm you don't succeed by talent. You succeed by altar. Fame. 
fame is a very powerful tool in darkness because fame manipulates decisions. That's why anyone in marketing will always look for famous people to sell their product. Mtu anaweza tu akia tu ina kasura mbaya but ukute watu tu wamevaa because a famous man influence their decision without their consent. That's when you are hearing of brand ambassadors. Si hata wewe kuna kitu ushainunua juu uliona kwa I'm not saying those brand ambassadors are devils. But I'm just trying to tell you fame is a very powerful tool. Number Number 9 10 Okay, where can I call 9 number 10 notes ni zako. Gifts gifts of idols and things dedicated to marine kingdom. Gifts of idols and things dedicated to marine kingdom. We, we, we bested the wedding of a friend of ours and a close relative gave them a water dispenser. Just as a gift. Sometimes in weddings you always hear people say, sanctify the gifts. You don't know who came. Not ban them, sanctify. Just say, Father, anyone with a wrong intention, I cancel it, I'll enjoy these gifts. So they were given a water dispenser and the marriage was in chaos. Even a pastor friend of mine told me he was given a watch and it's like there was a demonic timing over his marriage. And they prayed until the Lord said, this is the thing. This thing is not a watch. This is a connection. Back in my wild days, a lady gave me a chain that had a palm tree. It was silver in nature. I was very young in salvation. Silver in nature. And she arrested me sexually. One day I was tired. I was taking a shower. And I was telling the Lord, Lord, I know your ways. You must deliver me. That thing broke. I went and I found two missed calls from her saying it is over. You know, me ni kwa na joani usani, ni mependa tu silver. Me na pewa silver iko na kapal. Na si kwa na katoa. Some of the things. Na si adi na wa uzi woga. Are we together? I'm just trying to say it is your responsibility to be sensitive that someone can give you something and there will be a witness in your spirit when, when all, all you need to do to survive in this world is to increase your spiritual frequency not everyone is a devil there are many good people so i don't want you to begin now to enter those levels are a gift no 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 don't, don't demonize everyone Someone said, you know, sometimes you teach some of these things and people begin to see the devil in everything. Baba is a hand is a China. Roho ya dragon to Naikata. Is a vijiko za India. Baba yo roho yo roho ya ngombe to Naikata. Na hata yi mchele ya mwea. Labda ni pano na mchawi. You know, na unombea tu chakula, you see there. So tell your neighbor, my intention is not to demonize you. But it's just to raise an awareness. Are we together? Just to raise an awareness that gates can be opened. And personally, it's also for you to understand and live a free life. So these things do happen. That cutting broke and that was my freedom. People can bind you. People can take advantage of you. How does this spirit manifest? Manifestation. Number one, they manifest as pride. Rebellion and disobedience. Pride, rebellion and disobedience. Pride, rebellion and disobedience. Being Luo is a software. For the sake of my Luo friends, I will not say much. Pride, 
rebellion rebellion it is a man the man of kenya and this is not to say that the whole community is wrong it's just a ruling power are we together number two manifestation as perversion perversions sexual immorality sexual dreams this one is one of the things you begin to teach every theologian rises spiritual husbands and wives perversions sexual immorality sexual dreams spiritual husbands and wives let me bring clarity over this matter demons don't have gender they are spirits but demons can wear a familiar face when i teach on these spiritual husbands and wives i'm happy i don't teach it from a place of observation i teach it from a place of attacks one day i ask myself i dream eating i don't wake up with a full stomach i dream robbing a bank i still wake up poor then i dream that someone came in my bed and i wake up with evidence i said something must be off science will put it and say they are called wet dreams as you grow and enter puberty you know this is just the mutation of life we respect science but i have met people i have seen this spirit live and they will tell you this thing harasses me and it has now turned out to be like a rape case some people even grow with it there is a lady we knew her and she wanted to get married to one of the pastors and this spirit anytime she was about to get married intensities of attacks came until one day she saw it and it said you are mine to a point it was so intense because one of the pastors in life church saw it and said it even looks like you have children demonically in the spirit we interrogated her life and she said the thing began to visit her when they were very young the father was absent and this is a pastor's child the father was absent the mother was abusive so she used to stay in her room and there was every time in her dream that someone like a young boy will come and as she grew the thing grew to a point now there was persistent intercourse and then later she saw children coming in dreams coming to circle and anytime she wanted to get married that thing will intensify operations now people you see it's like witchcraft people that have never lived in areas where witchcraft is they always look and say hi yeah, you guys are lying but people that have been harassed by this demon some of them don't even want to share because some of the pastors make it look like it's imagination where people are being attacked violently something just shows up and attacks your life sometimes it's because of this marine spirit hallelujah let me give you the other points then i'll address it and then we'll make a prayer is that okay because in the points i'll be able to explain more and i believe today i'll pray for anyone that has that attack and I will show you that it's not your fault. You are not immoral. There are doors that are opened. And if they are not shut, it has legal access. It is so bad that you can be married and this thing will attack you. Married. So it's not about being young. It's about attacks. The second thing of this is barrenness and miscarriage. The marine kingdom can manifest in barrenness and miscarriage. Barrenness and miscarriage. Number four, premature deaths, premature deaths, premature deaths, premature deaths. 
Number five. Barrenness and miscarriage. Number four. Premature death. Number five. Anywhere the marine spirit is ruling, you find there is an antichrist spirit. Churches are fought. There is an antichrist spirit. Churches are highly fought. Churches are highly fought. Number six. Anywhere there is domination of this spirit, you find cults and occult presence. Especially strange churches. You find cults and occult presence. Cult and occult presence. Especially strange churches. Some of them wear uniforms. I was in South Africa and I saw some people walking with the net and white robes barefoot in Cape Town. And I asked my driver, who are these? And he said, these are the worshippers of the sea. I asked, what do you mean? He said, yeah, these are the worshippers of the sea. Anytime you find a place with marine power, so you find cults and occult, you find divinations and false religion. Divination and false religion. Divination and false religion. The other one, you, you find infirmities, magonjwa, just demonic oppression. Infirmities and poverty. Umaskinio weleweki na magonjwa. I'm about to mention something very sensitive. This spirit can also manifest as long singlehood with sexual immorality. Long singlehood with sexual immorality. That your singlehood is prolonged but there is a lot of sexual desires so that you stay in that oppressive status. Long singlehood with sexual immorality. And sometimes some of this singlehood level is where you begin to find what we call these night demons. Let me take the next few minutes and then we'll pray. Are we together? Because I want to deal with this matter today. Are we together? Yes. These night demons, they are given Greek names. Incubus represents the male and succubus represents the female. Incubus represents the male and succubus represents the female. The core business of these spirits is to release the spirit of lust. This one you have to get clearly. The core business of these spirits is to release the spirit of lust. Lust. What is lust? Lust is sexual appetite that wants to be met in an ungodly ways. That is lust. Sexual appetites that want to be met in an ungodly way. Sexual appetites that wants to be met in an ungodly way. This is where you have adultery, fornication, masturbation, LGBTQ, gayism and lesbianism, bestiality, incest. The core demon responsible for lust is called Asmodeus and it works with incubus and succubus. So anytime you have a visitation of this spirit, that is the core assignment. When you understand the functionary of a spirit, you have ground to oppose and overcome it. Are we together? Are we together? And, 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 and this is so strange because anytime there is that attack, that's exactly what it wants to sow in your life. So when there is such an attack, you must rise and disengage. Because that's what the spirit wants to release in you. It's a defiling spirit. Now there are 12 doors that open. That are open. And once they are open, um, you will begin to experience some of these night demons. 12 doors. 12 doors. 12 of them. Number one, fornication and adultery. Fornication and adultery fornication is having sex before you're married adultery 
is sleeping with a person who's not your wife or your husband. Now these are matters that are not taught in church because we live in the age of grace. Now spirits are legal in nature. Fornication and adultery will open this door. Number two, masturbation. 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 Some of these jargons are strange on the altar. And the devil loves the silence when he oppresses people and nobody talks about masturbation. I discovered that masturbation is the manifestation of something. Majority of the people who struggle with masturbation, either they are dealing with self-esteem, past pains, or even fear of relationship. So masturbation is a byproduct of something. It's a byproduct. There is a whole science that even shows how masturbation affects intelligence and begin to demean you and bring a lot of devaluation over somebody. Number three, pornography. Pornography. They say there are more than 60 million pornographic sites globally. 60 million. Right now, many people dealing with marriage will tell you pornography is a new devil. People are not talking, but people are going through stuff. And one thing you need to understand, pornography opens a legal door for the attack by Asmodeus. Let me explain. Sometimes we teach these things in high school, but I believe some people pick habits from high school and they carry on with them even in their old age. Now, if I go to a pornographic site today and I open the site, it means the spirits that are there, I am the one disturbing them. They were not disturbing me. So whatever jumps on me has legal ground. That's why the deliverance on pornography is what we call participatory deliverance. That the one being attacked must be willing to act to be delivered. And part of these things take actions. Getting a phone that will not lead you to such areas. There must be an intentional walk to walk out of some of these addictions. It is beyond a prayer. It is beyond a prayer. There are specific actions that must be taken. That is why no matter how much I pray, if one is bound by a smodia spirit out of pornography, that spirit cannot live because of my prayer. Somebody must divorce that spirit because you are the one that opened that door. Am I speaking to anyone? Pornography. And it looks like the enemy was waiting for a generation of sight and ears because this this pornography masturbation fornication adultery is like they operate in the same area number four unforgiveness and bitterness and this one is a general door for any demonic attack and forgiveness and bitterness the quality of your heart in prayer dictates transactions in the spirit the quality of your heart in prayer dictates transactions in the realm of the spirit and forgiveness and bitterness and forgiveness and let me say this with a lot of humility please and women don't get me wrong i've discovered that many marriages that have failed have left the women bitter and Someone said, and forgiveness is like carrying a bag of rotten potatoes. You bear the stench and you bear the weight. Can we have church? Please. I know someone might walk in your life and mess you up. Someone might leave you with children. is not picking your calls. Now you are being framed as a single mother. Not because of anything that you did forgive not because he deserves because your heart 
needs to heal. We don't forgive because people said sorry. So one day, before I married my wife, the person who broke my heart very well never apologized. Good heartbreak. Three years later, I looked on her profile picture. She had added weight. Her life was going on while my life was stagnant. You know, I was looking at the, 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 there are people I follow online and sometimes you know someone has not healed by the intensity of photos they send. Some very skimpy because you know if I put this photo he will see. And then you go there to see whether he saw. And then you want to know what is she or he saying. Pastor is forgiving easy? No. But when you understand the benefits of forgiving, you'll discover it doesn't help anyone. One person said, the day you forgive, you'll discover you have set a prisoner free. Only to realize that prisoner was you. The day you forgive. It is healthy for your heart. Life must go on. Can we talk? I know you are messed up by a man. Or you are messed up by a woman. See at watu ukufa. See nukweli. See, move on. Move on. Even if you don't revenge. Any harm on your body thinking you are revenging. It doesn't harm the other person. Just pray and tell the Lord, give me a forgiving heart. And I know it's easy to deal with death because you never see that person than deal with a person who's alive. Sometimes you are healing peacefully, then they insult you. And you're like, Mimi Number five, carnality Somebody say carnality. Somebody say carnality. Number six, fear and doubt. Canality ni unyama. You have nothing spiritual in your life. Everything you want to see it from the lens of flesh. Tunaitanga unyama. And you have to avoid carnal friends. Number six, aka kawad kanaitangu wacha tukwe real. Aka kawad ni serious. Number six, ako kawad kanasemanga no one is perfect. Apondo unyama inanzi. Inanzianga. Ioni <laughs> opening statement. Ya unyama. Everyone is going through something. <laughs> you are not everyone. You are not no one. Number six, fear and doubt. Fear eliminates faith. Doubt eliminates the power of your prayer. Number seven, witchcraft. Seven, witchcraft. Number seven, witchcraft. Number eight, molestation. Number eight, molestation. I discovered people that were either abused when they were young or even old, it just opens a door of pervasiveness and many other things. Number nine, abuse. And this can be physical or emotional abuse. And that's why for those who are married, number nine and ten becomes a very serious gate. Abuse and number ten, emotional wounds you are married but this man keeps on speaking very bitter words and then this spirit comes to comfort you at night and it begins to affect your intimacy with your spouse anytime you disagree with your spouse the spirit shows up to comfort you number 12 soul ties Especially with the carrier of that demon. Soul ties. Soul ties. Soul ties, especially with the carrier of that spirit. There are three types of soul ties, four of them. There is soul tie, where, which is open because a man shared so much in his heart. What people call kufungua roho. You open so much to a person. This is exactly what happened between Jonathan and david that their souls were knit together you open up to a man that's why some relationships when they die it's very hard to move on because you feel like a part of you is in the other person 
That's why even in pastoral care, we don't encourage people to be very comfortable with us. Especially if I'm a man and you're a woman. You begin to open up on very personal issues. The next thing you begin to hate my wife. Because you feel like we are tight. Subconsciously. There are places I must tell you I'm not Jesus. And the matters you are telling me, talk to a woman. Someone came out of the country and said, Pastor, for six months, I've not had sex with my husband. I said, eh, hey, there we don't cross. So what do I do? As a pastor, what do I do? And I'm a man. That one share with another sister. Are we together? Can I help you, church? As a pastor today, we don't have answers to all your questions. Even as we have questions, we are asking God. Especially the ladies. Let me just love on you today. Please, sometimes you come and think I'm a God. No, I'm not a God. There are matters where we are on Mungu. There are people who share very personal issues. And after some time, they begin to feel like they are going out with the pastor. Baga kikwambia, hi. O delay. Anajam. Unashi notes. Chanikai kwa notes. Unamoja alinitusi. Yani pastor ni mabluti tu. Because you know, tulifika hapa lini. Maka ni kajuliza, ama ni mimi sijai fundisha ona vizuri. Ama ni yazayo kuja na maboard guard. But I realized, sometimes when people open up, they become even vulnerable. That's how pastors sleep with members. Today we are talking. Because you come and share very personal issues. And then you feel like this man knows everything about me. And then you become very vulnerable. And then you feel it's like we are dating, it's like we are not dating. What is this? This emotional confusion. Munaskia mapasi. Ini enyu nasioni mkiandika notes. You know, I'm working with this sister. She's going through a heartbreak. So I'm just way away. That's why Pastor Anita is there. Sister to sister talk. That's why we have women like Mrs. Njoroge. This one now has daughters. And as I'm going to be a kaka kwangu pone. Ni. Sise mi munafanyanga ivo lakini. Iyo ni wisdom kutoka kwa mother bahu. And number 12. I saw this one. And it surprised me. Number 12. Spiritual warfare spiritual warfare i saw this thing i wondered pastor because i remember one day i was doing 21 days of prayer 21 that night on the 20th a spirit came in the form of my wife but it was dark and it was a woman naked and i'm in sleeping and i can sense interference i felt like someone just woke me up i called my mother i asked what is this I'm fasting. I thought this is the time where no devil can touch me. She told me that thing was supposed to interfere with your prayers. Because I'm supposed to open on the 21st day. So I wondered. I thought when I'm fasting there is no attack. But I discovered sometimes when we fast we empty ourselves. And we become so empty that anything can jump in. Right now we are dealing with a case of a brother who fasted until he entered the realm. That he does not know what he's dealing with. That's why you need to fast with wisdom. So, and that's why some people, we used to go to the prayer mountain. And one of our friends will pray and say, Najwa kuna mapepo as yogopangi mafuta. Eh, asema hiyo roho ya incubus. And we used to laugh. Tukilala kwa domi ya wanaume unasikia incubus na succubus. Nini you can't attack us. Because when you fast for long, you open doors. That's why a man can go for 40 days on 41st day. Umetembelewa. There's a time we were going to Meru and we were so tired and we got into a, we didn't have, there was no room. So we got in the funny hotel, a dingy place and we slept because as a missionary, you sleep anywhere. That night, an attack came. The Lord woke me up and told me, you, you are sleeping in an area that is highly active in matters of morality. So I woke up, cleansed the place, then I slept because I was tired. Because there are areas you enter and that's the dominating power. Is someone hearing me? 
So the reason why I've shared about the open gates, because many people that face these attacks, they always think, Pastor, what is wrong? How is this spirit living in me? Some of these things, they are gates here. Maybe you are not even responsible. Now, if someone abuses you and there is an attack over your life, does it mean that you are evil? No, you are not evil. You are not evil. You are not evil. And I think now I can pray. Because the fact that people don't want to talk about these things, people are struggling. People, some people don't sleep. Some people, every night you get in bed, there is an attack. By this revelation, today is your day of deliverance. Anything that has held your life. Some people want to get married, but you sense it's like there is a prolonged singlehood. Anytime you are getting in a relationship, there is intensity of this attack. Some of us are married and this is the battle we keep on facing. Today, my goodness, I don't know how I'll make this prayer, but we are going to make a prayer. We are going to make a prayer. Just stand up on your feet. Let me have the worshippers. Oh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please, don't leave. Hold on. I've shared this and I've told you this has nothing to do with you being weak in prayer, with you being weak in your salvation. Any attack that happens in a dream is unfair. Any attack that happens in a dream is, is unfair. It means you are not ready for it. Thank you, Jesus. And today, if you know this thing has been affecting you, don't be ashamed. When a man goes for healing, when a man goes to deliver, you don't care about whether the surgeons will see your nakedness because you need help. I said I'm teaching not from theory. I know what this thing can do over your life. Hallelujah. I know what it can do. Some people have sought prayer and they're like, what is happening? I've shared and I've said, anytime there is attack, it's because a spirit wants to be deposited of lust. Now, anytime you sense that attack, pastor, what do I do? Wake up, cancel that operation cancel it say in the name of jesus you will not deliver last in my life and anything you wanted to release i abort it now that's the prayer you make and don't be afraid we are more than conquerors and some of these things become so persistent you also need to be persistent in a natural relationship when a man is persistent on you and you don't want that person, the more you say no, is the more you reduce the frequency of his persistency. Some of these demons are stubborn. Some of them you pray, you go for two weeks, no attack, then they come back. Even if they come back, remember, what is the core business? To so last. Are we together? And remember, it doesn't mean there is demonic attack and there is demonic oppression and demonic residence. Whatever we are talking about, the demon is not in you. It's an attack. It's an attack. And attacks are everywhere. So don't think you are not born again. Don't ask yourself, why is it that now this thing is attacking me? Because we are born again. And anytime you are born again, there is a lot of demonic activities and attacks. It doesn't mean you don't love God and it doesn't mean God does love you. And that's why it's a very high level attack because it happens in your subconscious when you're not awake. And today, this is a very strange altar call. But I'm sharing all this so that whoever comes to the front, don't be afraid of anyone. And let me give these instructions. 
This is not the altar call where people take photos. You make that sure that camera is blurred. I know there are also people online. Or just focus on me. I know there are also people online. This is the day of your deliverance. This is the day of your deliverance. I say this is the day of your deliverance. That door must be closed. That's why I laid the foundation that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That gate will not prevail. It will not prevail. It will not prevail. Let me receive my pastors on the altar. Just come and stand here. Because we are going to lay hands on men. I was preparing, I saw a few things. The spirit. That's why I'm not in a hurry to make the altar call. But I can assure you, someone's day of deliverance is today. Yeah. I can sense a lot of agitation in the spirit. A lot of war. Because it's the will of the devil that people stay with ignorance so that he can continue to oppress them. But that oppression is coming to an end today. That oppression. Please don't be afraid whether you are a worshiper, whether you are a camera person, is your day of deliverance. The year, even if you are a pastor and this thing has been, please, this one, I say this thing is stubborn. Hallelujah. I'm laying that ground so that none of us will leave that door and then come and look for me on Wednesday. And say, Pastor, what you are saying is true, but I was afraid. Because there are environments that I can't create in my office. That's why I prefer praying for people from the altar. Other than having sessions in the office of matters addressed on the altar. You reign. You Asian Zion skin. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion king. If you're there, just Kadosh, Kadosh, come to the altar. You are mighty on your throne. If you know this thing has been affecting your life, you reign. Don't be afraid of anyone. Don't be afraid of anyone. Today is your day of deliverance. You are not evil. It's an attack. Don't be afraid of anyone. Run to the altar. Irrespective of rank and office. Just run. Just run. We came to be set free. Jesus said I came. I came to set men free. I came to break the yokes of the devil. I came to set the captives free. Don't be afraid of anyone. We are a family. Oh, Jesus. Some of you is because your blessing is in marriage. There is a persistent attack. Because the enemy does not want you to enter into the office of marriage. Whatever it is, Satana O Shande Bredila, Leka Tomi and the Lebre Diabara, Sekatana O Shataya, Repanado Satayaba, Leka Tomi Badela, Rakano Sopra Diabara, Sebelebo Shetanaba, Katana Brako Palakaya, Setomia Beluna. Even them that are watching online, it is your day of deliverance. Shut up, the marine power, the marine kingdom will not dominate a generation. The spirit of perversion, barrenness, whatever acts that come upon men. Lord, you have given us authority. You have given us power. You have given us authority. We take that authority today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the doors be closed. Let the doors be closed. Let the doors be closed. Any door that was opened, the door for the 
pressure, the door of adultery, the door of masturbation, the door of pornography, whatever door that was opened, whatever door, door of molestation and abuse, physical and emotional abuse, doors of warfare, whatever door that was opened, we shut it now, we shut it now, we shut it now, we shut it now, we shut it now. Brados, Leperia Kataya, Palora Vidata, Zeta la Bracatova, Isha Palabos, Mandoliva, Zetonia de Rosca, Macande Maria Zataya, Shepa Lava, Break the yoke, Break the power, Let it bow, Let it bow, Let it bow, Open up your mouth, Begin to close the doors, Take authority, Begin to close the doors. I have given you the keys of the kingdom of Zion. Begin to close the doors. Begin to close the doors. Father, in the name of Jesus, all living and everlasting Father, there is no one else like you. You are God by yourself. And I thank you for this service. And I thank you for the authority that you have given us in the name of Jesus. I know there are people here. Their blessing is in marriage. But there is a contention. They have been seeing these night demons. The succubus and the incubus. Sponsored by the system of Asmodeus. Today in the name of Jesus. Today in the name of Jesus. Any legal door that was open, I close it now. We close it now. We close it now. We close it now. We close it now. Any door open, we close it now. Anyone under the sound of my voice, when there is an attack over the gate of marriage, there is an attack over that gate. Today, in the name of Jesus, we declare that attack. Let it come to an end. Let deliverance come upon you now. Let the anointing of the living God, the anointing that breaks the yoke, let that anointing come upon you now. Begin, pastors, lay hands on them now. Begin to lay your hands on them. Begin to lay your hands. Close the doors. Break the yoke. End the siege. No more attack in your dreams. We close that door from this hour. We close that door from this hour. The spirit of lust cannot live in you. You are a carrier of Yeshua. The spirit of lust cannot live in you. We close that entry. We close that entry. We close that entry. I break that cycle. I break whatever visits you to violate you falsely. From today, it has lost its ground. No more attack in your dreams. No more attack in your dreams. No more attack in your dreams. No more attack in your lies. Kadai. Kalo Sabaladela. And those that are there begin to pray, contend. I have mentioned many things. It is a whole kingdom. It is a whole kingdom. Take authority over the waters. Some of you, you need to enter into the level of trade. You do business by the waters. Begin to take authority over the waters. Take authority over the sea. Take authority over the sea. Let the sons of Zion arise and begin to do business in the waters. The tribe of Zabalum shall not 
miss their inheritance may the lord now plant you where you need to flourish we scatter the powers of the marine even in the territories of limuru we scatter the power of the marine whatever keeps the city in bondage whatever keeps the city in chaos we scatter the power we scatter the power we declare deliverance on the land we declare deliverance on the land in the territory in our families in our homes we are the hand of the marine kingdom people that we have consulted diviners and occultic men that roam in the territories to exercise their wrath we arise now in the name of yeshua we arise now kadabados repaliada rokotolobosata pekodibada rapaladiazata let the intercessors begin to engage on behalf of the city limuru shall be delivered limuru shall be delivered the powers of divination the occultic powers whatever rule the atmosphere we come as the ecclesia we come as the church of jesus christ we arise in the name of yeshua let the city open up There was that enchantment. There was that enchantment. Thank you, Jesus. Let the yokes be broken. Let the cycles. Let the cycles come to an end. Kalabo shandele prediba. Sato baka de bada. Just in a, in a momentum of prayer. Stay in an environment of prayer. Our marriages will not collapse. Last will not take away a generation. We arise against that Jezebelic manipulative power. La 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 it will not collapse. We close those doors right now. Oh, Shapalada, be comidada, la topra dia baranos, isa telebre cota la baia, se canema taraba, chato pradia, me canosa vila daia, marriages will work, families will work, young men will get married, young people will get married. Those gates are being broken now. Lord. Yeah. 
Them that are here, lift up your hands to heaven. Just lift those hands to heaven now. As I said, this is not an attack because you are immoral. It's just an attack. Don't doubt your salvation. Don't think, oh, pastor, is because of our No. As a pastor, I've received these attacks. It's an attack. It's a defiling spirit. It's a spirit that wants to take you out from the frequencies of your operations. Today, I keep on hearing this word very loudly. Majority of you, the attack is because of the destiny of your marriage. It's not just an attack. It's an attack because there are forces that don't want you to cross towards the doorway of marriage. Because there are blessings that are ordained for men in the institution of marriage. Today, in the name of Jesus, I close any door that could have been opened in your life. Whatever gave that spirit legal ground of operation, from this hour going forward, we declare that legality is taken off in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now I announce anything deposited in your body and your spirit as a spirit of lust. I declare it is terminated and aborted from this hour going forward. In the name of Jesus, we close those doors and I declare some of you time to transition into marriage has come. No more attack over that door. No more attack over that gate. No more attack over that gate. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the fire of your prayer altar. Let it come back again. Whatever wanted to defile you so that you may not do business. We command it out. Let it leave you permanently. Let it leave you permanently. In the name of Jesus from today as you begin to pray as you enter into sleep them that have been receiving a harassment it looks like war from today that demon leaves that house and that room permanently in the name of Jesus no more oppression no more oppression you will sleep well some of you you have never enjoyed your sleep from today i declare sleep is your covenant right the bible says he gives sleep to them that he loves go and enjoy your sleep no more attacks no more attacks in the name of jesus you can stand